us today. And now, here is Brian Duff. One of the Kings, they score in the game's opening minute on the power play and have that advantage over the Buffalo Sabres, but we have the advantage of allowing Brad to step aside for a few minutes <laughs> and welcome in a little Hollywood in the form of Buffalo-born David Boreanaz, who is uh, actor, producer, director, and uh, very busy, I might add, right now. Yeah, we're busy prepping the 200th episode, so it's, uh, it's nice to come out and watch a hockey game yeah, to, to, to kind of get away from the prep and, and all the madness, so it's exciting. So so give us an idea on that 200th episode of Bones, what we yeah. might be looking what, at. Well, we're shooting at kind of a homage to Catch a Thief. So we're basically 1954 Hollywood. I play like the Cary Grant character, and Emily plays like the Grace Kelly character. Nice. And so I play the Jewel Thief. She plays the detective. And a lot of dancing and a DC-3 in the air and a lot of fighting. And <laughs> at the end, I save the day. I pull the plane up, and everyone's happy. So, you know, some <laughs> martinis mixed in with that. It's all great. So... It's a, it's a fun episode, and it's a lot of work, but it's, it's, it's great. Well, as you know, based on the game being here, it's a late-night television yeah. back home. Okay. Uh, and now give the viewers an idea of how you got connected to this business through your father, I Man. guess, uh, yeah. a long time ago. Right. Dave Thomas, Rocket Ship 7, Dialing for Dollars, uh, mm -hmm. back in the 70s, you know, he had, and he had a kid show. And I would go with my dad to Niagara Falls, and he'd do Rocket Ship 7, and then he'd do Dialing for Dollars, and then he'd do The Weather. And so they know my father from Dialing for Dollars and Rocket Ship 7, the original Rocket Ship 7 with yeah. Mr. Beeper and Promo yeah. the Robot yeah. and yeah. all that Buffalo love. So that's how that kind of started with the, the television thing. And then he moved on to Philadelphia. But uh, my roots are hard in Buffalo. And, I, you know, I was born in Clarence. And, you know, I remember Ted's Hot Dogs mm -hmm. and Anderson's Ice Cream. And, of course, well, you, it wouldn't be the same if you didn't go to the chef's restaurant, exactly. right? Exactly. And get exactly. some spaghetti parm. Yes. Right? Yes. A dish that my father meatball. invented. I'm a sucker for meatball parm, you know. But it's, okay. But yeah. You it, can do that. I you can, can do it. You can put the meatballs on top of the spaghetti <laughs> parm if you'd like to. But a, a dish that was invented with, with uh, Lou. Lou's dad, Lou, uh, who is a great, who was a great guy, and they were great friends, and they hung out at this restaurant. So. Yeah, it's an institution in Buffalo, and yeah. so connected to the hockey scene. Yeah. As are you, but you yeah. still have that hardcore allegiance for the Flyers. So I yes. have to ask. When L.A. became Philadelphia West, mm -hmm. was that enjoyable or painful, given that the ex-Flyers had such great success here in L.A.? It's tough. I mean, two cups in three years is, is pretty big for the Kings. I yes. mean, when you look back and you see what they've done and how they won that first cup. And I know when, when Richards was traded over, I know he was very upset why you trade a captain over and move a franchise player mm -hmm. and give him that contract over to the Kings. And with Carter, it was tough to see those two players leave. And I think in the long run, we got to see how that that trade plays out right now. For I know Philly, with yeah. with Voracek, and he's producing pretty good for us right now. Uh, the Shen trade deal, we're we're still waiting on that one right now. Braden, see how he steps up. It's it's early in the year, so it was tough to see to see Mike go over and Jeff. I, I know them personally, great guys. Uh, but you know, I get to come here and I get to see him play. And then we yeah. lost, you know, Justin Williams. We they, they ended right. up going to to Los John, Angeles. John Stevens, the assistant coach. Stevens, here. Yeah. the assistant coach, who was the head coach with yeah. Philadelphia. So there's a lot of flyer love here in Los Angeles. So were you rooting and, uh, for them then? Like you, you know, you it's kind of like the them? half. Yeah, it's <laughs> like they, we know the cup and win the cup. I got a little flyer orange and black love that's yeah. kind of shaded with that blue and gray stuff going right. on with the Kings. So, All right. You know. So what's the uh, projected date for this episode? We week? start shooting that actually Monday, but it's going to air December 11th. Very yeah, good. The 200th Great episode. time for the holidays. So. Yeah. Great to see you, David. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much it. for being Buffalo, here. Buffalo, I love you. You know, it's great to be here. And you know what? There's always Connor McDavid. Who was in the building in Buffalo last, last night, night and had a four point game? And a he, four point this, game, right? You know what? Why don't you stick around for the rest of the night? May Deep Day, draft. The night May, Day. May Day! David Boreanaz <laughs> is our first Niagara interview, first Niagara, the official bank of the Buffalo Sabres. Again, it's a 1 0 Kings lead over the Sabres through 20 minutes of play as that former flyer, Jeff Carter, has the game's only goal. Back with a look around the league out of town when we come back.